Hello, it's Duncan, and he's cold. I created the TDD Gilded Rose code base in 2021, when the default for Gradle build scripts was the Groovy language. Since then, I've tried to convert to the Kotlin DSL at least three times, and every time I've been beaten by some difficulty that just made the conversion uneconomic. Whatever you think about them, LLMs are certainly changing software economics at a rapid pace. So let's have another go, this time with AI assistance. Don't believe anyone when they tell you that the strong typing of Kotlin script will solve all your problems. I can't honestly remember the reason that I chose the groovy DSL for our build.gradle rather than the Kotlin one. I think at the time that I created this project, there were more examples in Groovy, so it was just easier to find the mystic incantation that needed to be typed in to get something working. More and more now, though, examples are given in Kotlin, so I think it's time to move over. I've tried this several times over the years with so much success that I haven't broadcast it, and we're still in Groovy. But I'm feeling lucky, so let's go and have a look at Gradle's advice for moving from Groovy to Kotlin script. There's a whole rather long page covering the topic, it does seem to be making it rather our own problem to decide whether this is a good idea, but I think that all these things are true, largely for me at least. And then the advice says replace single strings with double strings and places where we are using implicit calls with explicit calls and so on. It gives advice for specific scenarios like configuring tasks and so on and shows both the Groovy and the Kotlin, although irritatingly not side by side. So you can't see the one that you've got and what you want it to be. Overall, I get the impression this is going to be tedious and error prone. So let's try our latest weapon in the war against tedium and errors, and that is AI. So we can select all of this and say AI actions, new chat using selection. And I'm going to say, please convert the following Gradle build from Groovy to the Kotlin DSL. Let's go. Okay, then here's its suggestion. You can see that it has done the job of converting quotes. That's good. And it has done the job of converting implicit calls into explicit ones. In other words, putting in these brackets. Overall, it looks plausible as far as I can see. So let's say, create a file from the snippet. Oh, no, I want to create a file from the whole thing. So we'll say, create a file. There we go. Add that. Come back over here. Rename this one to be build.gradle and it's not kt it's kts for Kotlin script i think okay and now i'm not sure which of these two files gradle is going to be taking it as build so i'm going to rename this one to be dot old so we've still got it but we know for certain it's not going to be trying to be built right then let's have a look at our build and see how we did Okay then, the first madness, no value passed for parameter any and type mismatch inferred type is empty brackets to question mark, question mark, question mark, but K property star was expected. Don't believe anyone when they tell you that the strong typing of Kotlin script will solve all your problems. This seems to be setting up a delegate by project provide delegate. That seems plausible. Let's just remind ourselves what the old one looked like. We were just going to provide us environment variable. Well, okay. I wonder whether just to try that, see whether that solves the problem. Providers.environment variable. And that will go from there. It seems that IntelliJ is re importing when I stop for a moment, so that's good. And we're getting a new error here on line 20. Oh, well, what worked for this one should work for that, I think. So here we're going to say this is equal to providers.environment variable. Get rid of that one. And I'm going to take a punt, but we can do the same thing here get rid of that. Wait a moment. It tries to make things work and good. Okay. At the top here, we have Kotlin options, something, something to something is deprecated. Please migrate to the compiler options DSL. More details are here. I think as that's only deprecated, I'm going to come back. Okay. Type mismatch. Inferred type is provider string, but string was expected. Okay don't know what that means and we don't appear to be able to go into this flyway thing whatever it is maybe load script configurations location aware exception build file or gradle internal exceptions okay not sure that hasn't made things worse let's just try making a change and refreshing oh well at least we're back to the old problem whatever that is Again, can't navigate in there, which is a bit useless. Let's have a look back up at the top again. Ah, 
here we were doing or else something dot get which is a provider so we're calling get on whatever provider is but i've lost that here so i wonder if i just put that back there and there and there wait for a moment now where are we oh right okay so we seem to have finished most of the things so things like task with type have been upgraded that's good java toolchain that's all compiling i think the dependencies that seems to be fine there's a little bit of an issue here i think where things like jackson version it's here we've just got a val set up whereas in the old file here they were assigned into ext which as far as i can see is a hash table that can be used in other places and then pulled out in for example here this dollar i'm not sure that's doing the same thing or not but this says that it compiles so that's good Let's go back to the issue we have and that is generation tool and it's saying inferred type is something to unit but closure of something was expected okay again no drill down at all but given that we got this configuration originally from new studio griddle let's go and have a look on the internet to see whether we have a version of this in the kotlin dsl okay then here's the github page for the plugin it has the groovy DSL here, which it looks like we just copied because we have these same comments in it. But if I scroll down, there's a version of the Kotlin DSL. Now, unfortunately, we can't see them side by side. But what I do see is that this Duke configuration has this apply here. And as us as JDBC and generator and so on. Whereas that apply isn't here in this groovy version. We just have a block straight away. So I wonder if we can fix this by saying dot apply. Now it seems to be saying we need to call generation tool. Let's go back and have a look. Okay, putting what we have side by side with what we think we want, it looks to me like this generation tool should in fact be Duke configuration. So let's take that and put that there and see how that does. Now we have JDBC. Ah, yes, there we are, look, apply. So if we put dot apply in there, rebuild properties. Ah, we seem to have to create a property and then apply on that. So it seems to be exactly the same example. So let's copy that and use it there. Rebuild. Property does not have constructors. Looks like we need to import this one. Let's go and get that. Put that up the top. See whether that fixes things. Okay, good. Now we have the same issue with generator.apply. The receiver type mismatch seems to be a giveaway that we need apply. Forced types. Apply. Okay, it doesn't know about forced type. And this actually says, oh, we don't need apply, we need add all. And then list of something that is a forced type. Pretty sure I need another one of those. Ah, it looks like we need to call the constructor on force type here. So that's force type. And then we apply setting properties of it. And then that is going to be the end of that one. That's going to be the end of the list. And that's going to be the end of the add all. Force type it doesn't know about. No errors found on this line, but there's an error on this line. Again, the error handling is not all it should be. Really, I can't just import that. No, I can't. Fetch the force type for an import. Back here, put that back at the top. Rebuild. Where are we now? Generate dot apply. OK, deprecated is protected in generate. Here it seems to have an issue of naming conventions because these are is deprecated, is records, and so on. So let's go and make those right. Is records, is immutable, and is fluent. Every time it gives us an error, it doesn't scroll to it for some reason. I'm going to say target.apply. Just need to change this to strategy.apply. And note that now it's actually able to color everything in. So we're now getting syntax highlighting, which is good. And I think probably I can just change this to strategy name like that. Okay, let me first of all check that that can at least build and run our code. 
So we'll say clean test again, which will at least regenerate all the Duke classes. Oh, and it's failed. Ah, there's an error that looks like I can solve it because I'm betting that I made this property here wherever it was, SSL true, but we know in fact we had false. Try again. Good. I'm just going to do the little dance of clearing down the database to make sure that all of our migrations and everything work. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, there we go. I will show them running here as well for good luck. Great. Now these applies are a bit irritating and I think we could do a bit better. If I look at what Duke configuration is, it's a configuration which is an XML appendable. These other things like generator is a generator that's also an XML appendable. So we could target XML appendable with a little function. What we could say is that we have this function, which for some T, which is XML appendable, that I think we now might be able to import, although crashing IntelliJ in the process. Okay, let's go to generator, find XML appendable. Uh, no, I don't know what it's doing now. It's importing. It's now stopping importing. Can I go back up here? Maybe let's comment that out for now. Come back up here and say we want to import. Oh, look, there's our issue. The import failed for some reason. Okay, given XML appendable. Can I stop this? No. Given some function where T is an XML appendable, if we make... No, sorry, IntelliJ has gone again. Can I quit? I cannot. Time to force quit. Second time in two weeks. Okay, force quit IntelliJ, restart IntelliJ, fix that. Come back down here. Say, if I had a function where T was XML appendable, and I made an extension function on the T that was an invoke, that took a block that is the same type as apply. So what does apply take? Well, apply takes a T to unit. Go back here and say, let's take one of those. And we actually want this to just be an alias for apply, really. Now, if it's an alias for apply, then I could just call it in here. For example, there's one, and that would be fine. But that's not really much help. We want to get rid of that noise, and we can do that by making this an operator fun. If we do then, what effectively we're doing is we're saying that this could look like that with the brackets around it. And, well, we'd go all the way down here, wouldn't we, like that. But now, this invoke needn't be there at all doesn't seem to be an option it's giving us. I don't know why, but if we just remove this, then we'd be calling this invoke. And you can see if I click on that, there you are, we end up on the invoke. We've still got a bracket at the other end that is a bit wonky, but this is the, the, this is the sort of way that we can build a DSL of just blocks. So it means we can get rid of that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Uh, that one, in fact, let's just say apply, apply, and control G, 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 and delete them all. Like that. Except that again, it's given up. Can't type anything. I'll be back in a minute. Well, that crash lost my work again. So let's try again. <laughs> And you notice when it compiles, everything goes nice colors again. Well, colors again anyway. Don't know quite why we still need the apply here. I would have thought that we can call invoke. That seems to be happy. But it looks like when we call the constructor directly, that expression isn't being used as the input for this invoke here. Which at the very least I'll make private, I think. What's our issue here? Is marked unstable. Well, not much we can do about that. Maybe back to apply. And one last thing here, which is this Kotlin options. Let's see what we can do about that. Alt enter. There's no quick fix of deprecation. Please migrate. More details are here, but I can't click on it. Can I select it? No. Let's take this thing, say 
AI actions, new chat using selection, and say, migrate this to the compiler options DSL. Task with types, okay, that just says I should say that thing. Let's try it. And we appear to have no warnings, hooray. If we compare our groovy file on the left with the Gradle file on the right, you will see that some of the conversion has been quite smooth. Everything seems plausible. I'm not entirely convinced that ext and val are the same thing. That might cause us issues across build files. I think we liked the blank lines in here, so I think I'm going to put them back just to separate out our bits. These are our tests. That's JUnit. There's Playwright. HPPK testing. And finally, the Duke generator. The compiler options we had to do ourselves. Flyway seems fine. And then it was this custom plugin for Duke that took a lot of our work. Helped largely by the fact that I hadn't really changed much from the example given on the GitHub page. So there we are, not too bad. Hello, it's Future Duncan here with, as you can hear, a cold that's a little bit worse. I got a bit bored on the train on the way home yesterday evening, so I thought I'd see whether a different LLM could do a better job. So using DevOx Genie and Claude 3.5, I asked convert build.gradle to Kotlin script, please, giving it the build.gradle file, and this is what came out. If we compare on the left the version that we ended up with and the right the version that Claude has just produced for us, you'll see that it doesn't import some things. It does what is potentially a better job at pointing at the Kotlin plugin. It is identical all the way through here. It does a better job of identifying the Kotlin test dependency. It uses set rather than equals for some properties for some reason. It hasn't fixed the compiler options. It obviously hasn't done the invoke trick, but it has fixed up the Duke configuration. And in fact, arguably uh, down here with the force types where we had add all list off with only one thing, uh, it did a better job here by adding just one force type. And having tried it, it works first time. I have really no idea where the knowledge of how to make the Duke DSL work comes from. But it is remarkably impressive. So maybe the lesson here is that if one AI tool doesn't do the job for you straight away, just try another one because it might. Anyway, back to you two days ago, Duncan. We still do have a little issue down here where this is preventing the generate task from running as part of the build. We have to uncomment it to generate Duke unless we've done a clean. There is actually a way to fix that, it turns out, but as you can hear, my voice is going. So I think we'll leave that until next week. If you'd like to see how we can use Gradle build caching and task configuration to run tasks only when they absolutely have to, then now would be a good time to subscribe to the channel. If you press the like button, not only will Google send me a little hit of dopamine, but you'll also be able to look this one up in the list of videos you'd liked should you ever need to convert a build.gradle to a build.kts. And finally, you can support my work by buying a copy of the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin and Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.